G'day, it's Aiden at Springer Solar. We're gonna have a look at a new SunGrow hybrid system today. This system we've installed in Launton in the last couple of weeks. We're looking at a SunGrow three phase, 15 kilowatt inverter, 30 kilowatt hours of modular storage, and our favorite Canadian solar panels. Let's have a look at why we designed this system, how it's performing, and why you might choose one for your house. So when I initially spoke with this customer, he was right in the throes of building a new house, trying to figure out the best solar and battery options for him. New build, three phase property, we've got air conditioning. He's got an EV that he wanted to make sure that he could charge throughout different times of the day. He was also concerned about the rising cost of power and also what his system would do in a blackout scenario if he ever had to come across that. So this customer really wanted batteries from the outset. He wanted to make sure his self-consumption was covered and that any rising power prices, he wasn't gonna have to worry about. So why did he choose SunGrow over any of the other offerings that we have here at Springer Solar? We explored a few. We, we looked at AC coupled batteries. We looked at some other hybrids. In this situation, it came down to him having three phase power and this system particularly being able to deliver back up to all three phases simultaneously. So the specifications of this system is 15.4 kilowatt solar array. These are Canadian 440 watt N type modules. We've got a 15 kilowatt three phase SunGrow hybrid with consumption monitoring and 30 kilowatt hours of storage. That is six five kilowatt hour modules. This system can be expanded on, the, on both the solar and the storage side. We can do 40 kilowatt hours of storage per stack and up to four stacks being 160 kilowatt hours in the future. All right, so this system has been on here for a couple of weeks. Let's have a look at the data. This is live system data. We're looking at what the solar is producing, how the house is consuming it, and then what's happening with the batteries. Currently here in Brisbane, it's an overcast day, so we're actually quite happy that this system's producing about four and a half kilowatts. But what we're seeing here in particular is the solar is feeding both the household load and replenishing that battery even on a rainy day. So right now we've got a great example of a sunny day here in winter in Brisbane. We can see a nice round solar curve here. We can see the batteries charging. We can see some feed into the grid and overall consumption on the site. Let's look a little bit deeper at those. So within this program, we can actually set down here the things we specifically want to look at on a day-to-day -day level. Right now we can see what the solar's done on this particular day. We can have a look at the interaction with the grid for the system. This is where it's either buying in small increments or feeding out excess energy after that battery has been charged up. This is how the battery is charging or discharging at certain times of day, depending on the load. This is the load profile on this property. In the morning, this could be a heater. During the day, being a working professional, there's not a whole lot happening. Then we're finding back into the evening House starts up, people are cooking, people are watching TVs, charging devices. This is indicative of all this kind of load here. And then lastly, this is the state of charge of the battery. We can see being here early in the morning, he's already used a bit of battery overnight. If we have a look at this in line with the actual battery data, we can see that when this heat has come on in the morning, the battery started to discharge a bit. And then when the sun comes up in the morning, it's hitting back up to full. This here is indicative of a full day adverse weather conditions here in Brisbane. We can still see similar behavior in the morning. We've got that heater coming on. The sun's come out for a little while in the morning, replenish that battery. But through the day, we can see that the solar's coming up and down around what the weather's doing. He's still got really good offset of his energy, still charging his battery, even when we don't have great weather. We can have a look at an overall daily summary. 
We can see that on this particular day, we've got 43.6 kilowatt hours out of the solar system. This is early August. We've got a load of 18 kilowatt hours. We've got a battery charge of 11 kilowatt hours and a battery discharge of 12.2. On this particular day, this customer's sold about half of his energy that he's produced and he's only purchased 0.2 of a kilowatt hour. So when we're quoting our customers, we love to give them a roof layout and some indicative figures on what this system's gonna produce. Here we can see this system on daily average would produce 54 kilowatt hours a day, and then a rough monthly breakdown would be what they can expect, daily figures on a monthly basis. So here in August, our expectation would have been about 47 kilowatt hours a day, we're doing 63, that's 35% higher yield out the gate. So we try to be conservative on the front end. We wanna make sure that the customer has the best expectation possible. But this software, when it puts together the estimation, is taking into account a number of years of historic weather data and system degradation over time. So as you can see, this system's exceeding expectations. We're really happy about that. So at Springers, we're really selective about the gear that we use. We choose our partners carefully. We want to know that the product that we sell you is going to last a long time and perform the way that we say it will. We really enjoy doing these kind of projects. We love seeing people become energy independent. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.